Hey, this is John with Two Moves Home Inspections, and today we'll be talking about your ground fault circuit interrupters and how they might save your life without you even knowing it. Welcome to Inspector Insights. This six part video series will be discussing the service entrance panel, fuses, circuit breakers, ground fault circuit interrupters, arc fault circuit interrupters, and whole home surge protection. This video specifically will be discussing ground fault circuit interrupting circuit breakers, which can be referred to as GFIs or GFCIs. So let's talk about what a GFCI is and why it exists. As we learned in the previous video, circuit breakers can trip with a slow overcurrent, such as running too many devices on a circuit or with a fast short circuit. A short circuit occurs when a hot wire and a neutral wire are connected to each other without any resistance. Let's say you're about to hang your recently commissioned oil painting of yourself on the wall of your man cave or she shed, and as you accidentally hammer the anchoring nail through the hot neutral wires, the energy will quickly travel through the nail without resistance, and the result would be a short circuit, which would most likely trip the circuit breaker. Now you are not hurt whenever this happened because the energy wants to flow through the path of least resistance back to the source. And that path of least resistance was from the hot wire through the nail and then back into the neutral wire. Hopefully the circuit breaker tripped and your walls are not catching on fire, but maybe not. Spoiler alert, this is where an arc fault circuit interrupter would be really handy, but we aren't there yet. So what does a GFCI do for you? Let's say you only drove the nail into the hot wire and not both wires. This would electrify the nail, but not create a short circuit that would trip the circuit breaker. If you were to touch the nail as you were hanging your painting, you could receive an electrical shock that could result in electrocution. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the difference between shock and electrocution, the difference is, is that you can tell people that you've been shocked, but you won't be able to tell anyone that you've been electrocuted because you're dead. So how do we safeguard ourselves? A good place to start is by installing GFCI breakers at the service panel. A GFCI is made with a circuit board and an electromechanical switch that is controlled by a solenoid. The GFCI is constantly monitoring the amount of electricity that is going out on the hot wire and returning on the neutral wire. The values should always be the same, but if more electricity is going out of the circuit compared to what is coming back, then the GFCI will disconnect the power immediately because it has sensed that the power is going elsewhere. And where is elsewhere? Well, the electricity could be flowing through a person, discharging into an appliance, or lost in some other way because of a damaged circuit. In addition to sensing a difference between hot and neutral, GFCIs have another sensor on their circuit boards that senses ground to neutral current, which means that a GFCI outlet can be used to replace two prong outlets in older homes, allowing the homeowner to safely use appliances with a dedicated ground plug. It is easy to understand the way that a GFCI can save your life if you stick a fork into an outlet, since the electricity would be flowing from the hot, through the fork, into you, and then into the floor. The neutral wire would not have any current, and the GFCI would cut the power to the outlet. Understanding the ground to neutral fault when the GFCI is used to replace a two prong wall outlet that doesn't have a dedicated ground wire can be a little bit more difficult to explain, but we'll give it a try. In a large metal appliance like a washing machine, the hot and neutral wires are insulated from the metal frame of the washer, and the metal frame of the washer is grounded to the ground wire. If the hot wire were to make contact with the metal frame, then the washing machine would become electrified and that electricity would travel back through the grounding wire, keeping the occupants of the home safe. The occupants might feel a slight electrical sensation whenever they touch the appliance, but the majority of the electricity should be flowing over the ground wire and not through the homeowner. Since the two prong outlet doesn't have a ground wire, the amount of power returning to the GFCI is the same as what went out. So it hasn't caused a hot neutral fault but the GFCI is able to differentiate power returning on the ground. Because the power is returning on the ground, the ground to neutral fault in the GFCI will trip, turning off the power and protecting the user. GFCIs can be installed in circuit breakers or electrical receptacles. It's common to see GFCI receptacles in bathrooms, kitchens, laundry rooms, or the exterior of the house, or really anywhere that water might be found. If you touch a hot electrical conductor, wearing insulated shoes on a dry surface, you might not be seriously hurt, but if you're standing on a surface that has water on it, such as your garage when snow melts off your car, or even just standing on the concrete floor with sweaty socks, you've given the electricity a path to flow back to the source through your body, which will result in injury. The standards for GFCIs are always improving, but at this point, almost every surface that could have liquid spilled on it should be protected by a GFCI. 
Even the countertop of a bar that doesn't have a sink on it could have a drink spilled on it, which could come in contact with some Christmas lights, so the bar should have a GFCI installed. The nice thing about using a GFCI circuit breaker combo inside the service panel is that the GFCI breaker will protect the entire circuit from when it leaves the service panel as a hot wire to when it returns as a neutral. This can protect not just the outlets in the room, but the wires in the walls and the lights above your head. This extra layer of protection is inexpensive and a true lifesaver. GFCI protection is just the start of what you can do with your service panel. We still have yet to cover arc fault circuit interrupters and whole house surge protection. And if you remember that nail that we drove through the wall earlier, that might still be causing an issue that only an AFCI can manage. So let's talk about that in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or if you'd like to schedule a home inspection, please visit twomoosehomeinspections.com. Have a wonderful day.